Hi guys, welcome to the Doug Shoe Bushcraft Channel. Okay, today I'd like to show you an easy way to make a leather pouch. It's a simple pattern. You don't need many tools. Everybody should be able to do it. And the one I'll be making today will be designed to carry my flint and steel kit. Okay, so we're making this out of leather. That means, first of all, got to find a piece of leather. You can find leather at craft stores, hobby stores. I found a lot of these craft sizes at a thrift store recently. And they're about the thickness that I want. You can also try to salvage leather out of things. I found an old bowling bag in the trash years ago that was a good thickness. You can salvage leather from leather jackets. In fact, that's what this is made out of. It's a little bit thinner, or quite a bit thinner. And this one is actually suede. And you can do that, that's fine. I'm just thinking of a little bit thicker leather for this one. I mean, it's all what you want to do. This is a work of art. In my opinion, there's no right or way to do it. If it works for you, you like it, then that's great. So, so you need to scare up some leather and then also some sort of heavy cord suitable for stitching leather or thread or I've used fishing line, bank line you can use uh, leather lace if you want to we're going to incorporate different elements and then one, what tools do you need? not necessarily very many got a pair of scissors that's just from the Dollar Tree I think um, I could just use the knife but I, I prefer to use a pair of scissors Notice this uh, folding knife also has an awl on it. And that's not only pointed, but there's a little bit of a blade that way. And there's a blade on the edge, so I'd call it actually a kind of drill. And this is a Camp King by the Imperial Company, Providence, Rhode Island, USA. It's a classic knife, still works. Uh, what else do we need? needles with eyes that are large enough to fit the cord we're using or the heavy thread thimble helps me not to keep stabbing my finger and an awl or an ice pick you can use a nail just anything metal and pointed and having a big end on there helps me to not hurt my palm my hand I almost forgot buttons and beads I'm planning on using at least one button to secure the flap and the beads can be decorative they can also be functional in the tie strap there's different ways to do it but buttons and beads I've a little bin with a selection I mean this is artwork right so let's see where I go with that which piece of leather to use I could use both actually if I wanted to have one as the main color and then have trim with a different color. I think I'll start off with this one. Then I gotta decide what I want to do with it. My, my idea that I have is to hold my flint and steel kit. So my tinder box, my char tin is an old Altoids tin. Need to have my striker in there. Or I'd like to. Have a piece of flint in there somehow. And also, this might be sacrilege, but I'm going to put ferro rod in there just in case it's some sort of emergency. And the charred material I have isn't the quality I need to actually use the steel. Or, or let's say I'm sick or injured or something, it's a real emergency. You know. <laughs> Just have a little bit of practicality there. We'll put that in the bottom, no one will see it. All right. So, one of the simplest sort of pouches you can make is like an envelope. Like we've all used uh, paper envelopes. I mean, mail your friend a letter or birthday card or something, you have a paper envelope. So, kind of like that. 
and uh, even without any cutting, right, I could just stitch this and stitch this and have a flap and it wouldn't be the most attractive thing in the world um, but I could do that but I'm thinking taking the scissors trimming this or trimming the flap make that rounded and trimming the bottom edge make that a little bit rounded off I don't have to I just want to so I have to decide what size it's gonna be a belt kit so smaller can be better So I'm thinking making a cut like this. I mean the right way to do it is take a ruler and a pencil and uh, be real careful. But I'm doing this out in the woods. I just felt like being out in the woods so here I am. So I think I will trace it out with something. Well, I got this little box, right? So I can just make a scratch that I can see. There we go, I can see it. I'm not sure you can see it on camera. I can see it. So, uh, you know, I'm making this now in front of you guys in modern times, but I don't mind an antique look, a handmade look. You get too precise, it looks machine made. Isn't that defeating the purpose, kind of? I just want a little bit of a guide. All right. There we are. Yeah. Can you see my line? You can tell I'm not a pro. I'm just someone in the woods having fun. So, there you go. Now we're committed. I think these are from the dollar store. These scissors that work well. It's black fly season. One wants to go on my ear, that's all right. That's why I got the bandana on my head, you know. There we are. Excellent. So my grandfather used to say, cut it, and if it's too short, cut it again. Yeah. Measure once, cut twice. I I'm not good with these slogans. I mean, you gotta forgive me. So, yeah. Starting to look nice. So there's another method, a little bit more advanced, where you soak this for a while. Sometimes I soak it overnight, and then you can actually form it, like wet form it around the stuff. I believe that's called casing. You talk to a pro, but I'm not. Uh, but it's just simpler, easier, faster, I think, to do it this way. Leather does stretch whether you want to or not, so another way to do it is just make it like a simple envelope. And then uh, by putting things into the pouch over time, uh, getting caught in the rain and uh, the oils from my body is going to soak into this and uh, it's going to stretch out over time anyway. So I just got to figure out where I want that flap. I could cut more off up here if I wanted to, but I think I'm just going to make use of what I have. You know, something like that, maybe. So, let's make a crease. Start to... So I've been creasing this for a while. I also picked up a couple more tools just here in the woods. Got some certified rocks. There we go. Just hold that down for a little bit. Could have brought some sort of clamp. Didn't feel like carrying it. Now I have to decide what size thread or cord I want to use to stitch up the size of the bag with a pouch, deciding on this. 
Brought a few needles. This one has the smallest eye. It's a little bit too small. Let's see if this one works. All right, that's been sitting for a little bit. Should be starting to crease. Starting to remember where it is. So now I decide kind of shape I want this. One good thing about that is I can find my place again because it matches up, right? So I'm thinking I want it symmetrical. Basically anybody would, right? Um, easier said than done, but we're going for a rustic, right? So. I'm liking that. And I could wait till later, but I think I'll trim this now. So I'm thinking like that. Love it or hate it, I'm starting to love it. That's all that matters. Same with yours and you, right? This hobby table is need something. All right. So we'll be good. It's a belt pouch, so I want straps on the back for my belt to go through. It's easier to do it now 
then I stitch this all up and then I can't, it's, it's hard to get to the back side of that, right? So I have my trimmings. This is the thickest belt I ever wear. So, not ready. Thinking if I cut that in half, it will, will both still be thick enough. Didn't get it exactly the same. <laughs> I think I'll round off the corners a tad. So just like a little trapezoid. So that's basically how I want the straps to fit. I want to be right about there. So I got this on this old log. I have a table at home we don't care about, or this is scrap wood, plank, two by six, whatever you want to use. But as I'm putting pressure on here, it's going to poke all the way through and into this, right? But I don't really care about the old rotted log out in the woods. Just if you're doing it at home. Might not want to destroy all this stuff. Well, sometimes a hammer helps if you got some thick leather. So I want to get some sort of idea of how big a hole I want for the thread. It depends on what thread or cord I decide to use. I think I'm going with this. So I'll find a needle with an eye big enough for that to go through. Not gonna need a lot for this one little strappy. I don't think. So go from the inside so uh, my tail end and my knot won't show from the outside, right? Also, uh, that's going to be up against my body, right? So I don't want the knot to be poking me. Took a little bit of doing. To fight with a little bit, but that's what I want. That means it's tight around the thread. I don't want it all loose. So, yeah.
There's holes in my workbench. <laughs> Where's my hammer? Oh yeah. There we go. Room for one more. All right. See if I can go back through the same hole. I gotta make a knot somehow. Okay, that's one of the straps on the back to secure it in my belt. I'm gonna put the other strap on using the same method. Okay, the back is done. Time to turn our attention to the front and stitch up the sides. Another good thing about sewing on the straps on the back first is it doesn't really show. So you get your method down. It's your first time doing it. That's your practice. And then, hopefully it can make it look more beautiful on this side. It's time for me to plan out my stitching holes. And there's all different ways to stitch. Some are more decorative than others. Simple, fancy. I'm thinking I want the black bank line to show quite a bit so I might stitch it around like this be more visible and just going straight across so kind of plan out what I'd like to do people can be more precise in this If you wanted to, you could glue this together. I don't think I'm going to. But the stitching method that I'm using is so simple that it's easy for me to take it apart and redo it at a later point if I chose to. It would be very, very simple.
One side's done. Now I'll do this side in the same way. Excellent. Now it's starting to look like something, in my opinion. There's different ways, all kinds of different ways, to secure the flap. You could even make a crease in the flap, and this is heavy leather, so it would tend to flop over. But I want more security than that. I'm running through the woods. I don't want to lose my fire kit. My goodness. I could never show my face in the bushcraft community again. So what I'm thinking is a bone button right there, and then leather lace. I'll secure it. And I'll show you what I mean. I'm thinking about there. I'm not sure there's anyone else in the world using bank line to do this, but I've got it here, and that's what I'm doing. Usually, it use a much thinner thread to secure a button. So I'm going to have things in here, right? So I want to simulate that when I'm deciding where to make the holes in my strap. It's going to be four holes, two on each side. Like one here and one there. One here and one there. And you can pull down and tie the strap at whatever tightness you want and then without undoing the strap and get into your pouch. That's the system I'm going for. I'm going to do a test run on my piece of scrap leather here. And I want it to go through with some tension. That's part of the system. Alrighty. I'm going to use this piece of rotted wood just so I don't go all the way through and damage the back side. And since I just did it on the scrap leather, now I have fresh in my mind. I can also trim this pointy. I'll put it along. Yeah, that helps a lot. A little bit bigger though. I want to have some grit, but not a ridiculous amount. Of course, it's going to wear in over time as well. There we are. 
Excellent. Okay. Now I do want some symmetry to it. So I've got to eyeball this pretty good. Some people measure. It's crazy. There we are, guys. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Amen. Number 6, 24 to 26.